How did that get there? OK. <laughs> Quick announcement. Uh, I discussed with the group yesterday, after discussing with you guys, I think, last week, uh, about a time, uh, a time to meet that would work. And uh, for Whiteside and uh, uh, for, to accommodate with Whiteside and work schedule in the first hour meeting times, and the fact that people didn't want to get up at 8 in the morning, uh, I've decided that 1 p.m. is going to be our time. So if we have something going on on Fridays, it's going to be at 1 o'clock, so it'll be right after your first hour meeting. Uh, this Friday, what I want to do is I want to have a uh, is is I want to have a Zoom meeting just to uh, check on how we're doing and to answer any questions that you guys might have. So if there's uh, something we've talked about on the trig that you want me to go back and go through again and explain again. If there's something in general in the packet, because I haven't gone over, you know, here's how to do number 35 on the packet. Uh, if, if you want me to, if there's anything on the packet that you want me to go through in that kind of detail, um, you have the trig practice sheet that's due on Friday. If you're having trouble with that, if there's any particular problems on that you're stuck on, you can ask me then. Uh, or just any other things on the class that you uh, might have questions about or might need to know. Uh, we're one star review. This is unbelievable. All right. <laughs> Grab the function. X squared plus. These are coefficients, if you don't know. Coefficients of the terms. So plus x plus 1. So we sort of cancel. We'll talk about that canceling in just a second. But that tells us that it looks exactly like x squared plus x plus 1, except at 1. We'll talk about one in just a second. But now, to graph it, we just need to know what the graph of x squared plus x plus 1 looks like. So this is basically a parabola everywhere except at x equals 1. If I plug 1 into this function, I have a problem. Zero over zero. I don't like it. That's undefined. But you'll notice that I still had to put an open circle, which means it doesn't exist at that point, somewhere. And so I want to figure out exactly where this uh, open circle is going to be. Now have it your calculator. comes that parabola. It's not showing it, but it won as a whole. So let's look at what's going on around 1. Um, in, in, if you have a newer calculator, then this menu is an alpha trace. Alpha and trace will pull up your y variables. And you can do it that way. And remember, it's similar to our notation for f of x. So you can put y1 parentheses 0.9. And it'll give out the value. If you don't have a newer calculator and it doesn't, alpha trace doesn't bring out that menu, then the place to find those variables is vars for variables, vars to y vars function 
Why one? And then I want to put in y1 of 0.99 and see what I get out. And what we're looking at is that I don't know what's happening at 1 by just plugging in 1, because I get 0 over 0. So we're going to look at what happens if I put in numbers that are very close to 1 on either side. Okay. Here's what we're looking at. We don't know what is happening exactly at 1. So our strategy to figure out what's happening exactly at 1 is to study what's happening and how this function behaves at places very, very close to 1. And so we're studying and plugging in 1, not plugging 1, but plugging in places very, very close to 1. And we can plug in 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999 for x, see what we get out for y, and that can tell us how 1 would behave if it existed. That's what we're going to do in the graph. That's the idea of what the graph is going to look like. We can study what's happening very close to that x coordinate, and that'll tell us how the y coordinates behave, and thus how that point would behave. Algebra wise, what we could do, what we'll eventually do here, is to say, well, this is going to behave exactly like x squared plus x plus 1. And so if I took 1 and plugged it into x squared plus x plus 1, what would I get? I'd get 1 and 1 and 1 is 3. And so both the algebra of canceling out the x minus 1s and the graph and plugging in values very close to 1 are telling me that if 1 existed for x and I could plug it in, what I would hypothetically get out is 3. And that's the aim of what we're looking at. This is the idea of a limit, which is the core concept of our first chapter. The limit says if f of x, anytime you see f of x in a definition, you should think y coordinate. If f of x comes arbitrarily close to a single number l, that so L is our Y value. In this case, it was getting very, very close to 3. As X approaches C from either side, X value, then the limit of F of X as X approaches C is L. So C in this case was 1. We were studying what was happening with X around 1. And we found that the y values around 1 were very, very close to 3. And our notation for that is going to be the limit as x approaches c. This little arrow means approaches a particular value of the function equals whatever y value we're saying we're getting closer to. Okay. Does not matter if the function exists at that particular point. So the fact that I plugged in 1 and got out 0 over 0, not a problem. As long as we can study around that point and see what's happening, then we could figure out what that value would behave like, like if it did exist. In other words, we know that that open circle should be put on the graph at 1, 3. But it's an open circle because it doesn't exist. And so the notation in this case, in the example we just did, would look like 
the limit as x approaches, what was the x value we were studying around? x value. 1 of the function. So we're going to put in the function x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1 equals the y value is getting closer to is 3. That is what we are saying. And we're going to talk about this both in terms of studying the graph to do it, look at what's happening around that point, and studying the algebra. What function is this looking like or behaving like at other places? So this was kind of a complicated graph to start with. Uh, let's look at kind of a more basic example as far as uh, what the graph of it looks like. Graph the functions. Determine L so that the limit is x approaches 2 of f of x equals L. In other words, find the limit as x approaches 2. So graph this function. This should be an easier one to graph. Geometry last week, we were reviewing uh, graphing lines in slope intercept form. I'd hate for them to come in and smoke you on slope intercept form. Everywhere except at 2. Except at 2. At 2, what's happening? What's the y coordinate? 0. So what I want to emphasize here is that the answer to what is the limit as x approaches 2 is not asking what is f of 2. Those are different questions. In this case, they have different answers. In the last case, f of 1 didn't exist, but we could still find a limit. In this case, f of 2 exists, but the limit as x approaches 2 is different. What is the limit as x approaches 2? We went up 2 to the right 1 and up 2 to the right 1. So we went to 5 because we started at 1. It would behave everywhere else surrounding 2. It doesn't behave like 0. It behaves like 2x plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And you can see that in the graph as well. Surrounding it from the left and from the right, we're getting closer and closer to 5. 